I'm gonna scare you. Ha! Were you scared? Now I'm gonna tell you about something really scary, something that scares people so much that people have misunderstood it and tried to shut it down. This is kind of a follow-up to my video that I made about uh, how um, the biggest problem in media today, how depicting is not promoting, but this is going to talk about a very important type of storytelling, a, a very important type of tale, one that people really, really want to get rid of, but one that is one of my favorite types of storytelling and one that is very, very, very important. It is the cautionary tale. Now, what is a cautionary tale? Well, exactly like it sounds like, a cautionary tale is a storyline where a character falls into some bad stuff. They make mistakes, they don't change, and essentially the story ends with them facing the consequences of their actions and coming to a bad end. That is very crucial, a story where somebody comes to a bad end and it has a point to it. We can have our most recent example of a cautionary tale be Doom, which has made a lot of money at the box office, a story of somebody where the book version was about someone who becomes so corrupted by power and the need before power that they turn evil and everything kind of falls apart after that. But the cautionary tale is something that a lot of people don't understand. It's something that a lot of people yell about. It's something that a lot of people try to change. It's something that people say that they don't like, and I would say that those people just um, don't comprehend the importance of these stories, because the purpose of a cautionary tale is to teach a lesson, and I would argue that a cautionary tale teaches a lesson more effectively than any other type of storytelling. Now, cautionary tales are used very traditionally in fairy tales. You would have various storylines with Little Red Riding Hood and uh, The Boy Who Cried Wolf, which would be about characters where they originally came to bad ends. Like, there were tales about the Little Red Riding Hood where she would just get eaten by the wolf at the end, or Hansel and Gretel get absolutely get devoured by that witch. You know, if you go back further with fairy tales, you find that a lot of them just had horrible endings, and the same can go with legends and myths like La Lorna, if I pronounce that right, and things like that. Now, what were the purpose of these tales? Well, these tales would be told to children to essentially warn them of things, like Hansel and Gretel and Little Red Riding Hood especially. Little Red Riding Hood, the purpose was don't talk to strangers. The wolf is supposed to represent a stranger, that you should stay away from them, and that by having Little Red Riding Hood eaten by the wolf at the end was like a consequence. Don't go off by yourself talking to strangers or you'll get eaten by a wolf or it, it could be a predator, could be anything. Don't go off and talk to strangers because some of them might have very ill intentions. That's the point of that. Now the purpose of The Boy Who Cried Wolf, which I think is probably one of the most famous because, you know, whenever we talk about somebody who is lying repeatedly or sending false alarms, we always say, you're crying wolf. Now this is an important one to talk about a cautionary tale with because it's one that really stuck with me because when I was really little I heard two versions of the story. Story. I heard one version and it was about the boy keeps crying wolf and uh, eventually he does it to the point where there actually is a wolf and no one's there to save him, but he runs away and uh, the, the wolf gets some sheep, but the boy survives and he learns his lesson. Now I heard that story and that was one version, but then I saw another version of The Boy Who Cried Wolf and I, it, it was done in a book, someone telling it to me, and actually done on a Looney Tunes cartoon. And in fact, and in this version of the story, the boy just gets eaten by the wolf in the end and they don't come and save him. In fact, it's kind of in, but was ingrained in my brain when I was a little kid when you see the wolf just standing there in place of the boy picking his teeth at the end of the cartoon. <laughs> And that really um, stood out to me because uh, that that scared me because I was like, wait, he gets eaten? I, I, I was I was asking people, he gets eaten? That's what happens to him? Like, he, I was so disturbed that this wolf ate this boy in this cartoon. And that that's what stuck with me, but that is showing you what a cautionary tale is supposed to do. Because a cautionary tale is supposed to scare you into seeing the consequences. Like I said, that Lala Lorna was meant to, uh, I think, I can't remember the, uh, the um, myth properly, but I think that was something about, another thing about not going after strangers, not going off by yourself. You know, they were made to scare children into good behavior, essentially. And some people would say, you shouldn't do that. But allow me to um, express why the cautionary 
cautionary tale is so important in that regard. So um, the most important part to you for a person when they're uh, watching a story, reading it, or whatever the case may be, is the ending. Because the ending is what leaves you with your impression of the entire story. You could be watching, let's just take movies for example, you could be watching a movie and having a decent time with it, but if that ending is horrible, then you will think that you watched a bad movie. This has happened to me multiple times. I'll be watching a movie and it'll be fine, or it'll even be good, but then the ending will completely let everything down and then I'll think that the entire movie was bad because of that. Same things can be said with movies that are kind of mediocre, but maybe the last third is really great. Whatever the movie ends on, those final moments, that's what you're really left with, and that's what you're left with in terms of the themes of a movie as well. So let's 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 go back to that example of the fairy tales. And I think over the years they really try to sanitize fairy tales and you know make these alternate endings. Like what what I used to say, various myths and fairy tales would just end with bad endings because they wanted to scare kids into good behavior. But I think over the years they wanted to sanitize the stories and give them happy endings and that's what happened. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood is rescued and Hansel and Gretel make it home and all, all that you have there. A as you can tell with what I was talking about with uh, my experience with the story A Boy Who Cried Wolf, that the bad ending is more impactful in terms of a message. And why is that? Once again, what I was saying is because the ending of a story is the most impactful part. It's what it leaves you with. So if you're reading a story and characters make mistakes or things go wrong, but then everything comes back around and there's a happy ending, then you're going to be left with that happy ending. You're going to be left with the thought of everything was okay in the end. And that's why those aren't as effective of giving warning messages because those kinds of stories and that storytelling doesn't make you really consider the consequences of characters' actions as much because they didn't really face them at the end. Everything worked out. However, let's go to a cautionary tale, a cautionary tale which is always meant to have a bad ending. When you see things don't get better, when you see that characters are faced with these consequences or that maybe they've just destroyed other people or whatever the case may be, then you're left with that. There was no resolution, there was no coming back, and you're left with the idea that if you make certain mistakes, then sometimes there is no coming back. And that is a very scary thought and it's a very profound thought. And in terms of affecting people, in terms of a lesson, then that is the most effective way to convey it to someone because that is the most effective way to get somebody to try to not do something in the first place because they see that if they do go in a certain direction, if they make a certain mistake, then sometimes there isn't any coming back from that. And once again, that's very haunting. And that's why some people don't like the cautionary tale. And I think that that's why some people try to sanitize those tales. They don't want to scare people. But also I think that sometimes people just don't understand them. And it could be because we're trying to sanitize media so much and not challenge people with these ideas. But um, they should not be misunderstood that the cautionary tale is probably the most powerful thing you can use in order to inspire a certain warning message in someone's mind about don't even do this in the first place. And in my video where I was talking about depicting not being promoting, I talked about Harley Quinn and how she was a cautionary tale. That original storyline, you know, I, I think it's funny that when the Suicide Squad movie came out in 2016, a lot of people were saying Harley Quinn is meant to romanticize abuse. That's not what her character is at all. And I always thought it was funny people who just wouldn't even watch the original shows, wouldn't even think about them, were saying that. What really struck me about Harley's story, there's a lot of things I liked about the characters, but I'm just sticking to the cautionary tale of the character in Batman Mad Love. What really stuck with me is that she was so obsessed with the Joker, but she didn't get over him in the end. And she, um, she allowed him to um, uh, manipulate her because she totally has her own free will, but she let herself be suckered in at, at the end because she wanted to. And that made me think about the idea that I hadn't of before, the fact that um, uh, abuse is a cycle and it can be in relationships or friendships or business relationships, but it's the idea that, um, you know, there's a chance that you don't get out of it. And that's why the, the character's story was so different to me and why it made such an impact on me is because usually you see these storylines and if somebody is in a bad relationship or something, then they get out of it immediately because that's what we want to see. But um, that doesn't always happen in real life. There are people who stay in that their entire life. And that story from, you know, the Batman the Animated Series 
really, really stuck with me that to be super dependent on somebody, that can last forever if you don't get out of that. And that actually, you know, kind of got to me in some of the things that I was going through at the time, and it actually inspired me to change in some ways. And that's why I'm a big advocate for the cautionary tale and how, you know, people look at the cautionary tale as a surface level thing and say, oh, this is encouraging bad behavior. This is saying that uh, uh, people shouldn't change. No, sometimes when you show people not changing and you show the eternity of those consequences, that is what can get to somebody more than anything else. And so these people out there trying to shut down the cautionary tale or, or, or uh, illegitimize it or misunderstand it, like I see that with Dune as well. Like, no, that is the most important and convicting storytelling out there and some of the best storytelling. You know, we're all about, some people want to talk about storytelling in terms of the messages and the lessons that it can give. Well, some confrontational lessons are the most important. That's what happened with the Joker movie and, you know, I'm not really big as, as on the Joker movie in retrospective, but not for the reasons that it was another cautionary tale about what can happen if mental illness goes unchecked. And once again, people misunderstood it. People said that it was romanticizing uh, becoming an evil villain just because that's what you saw on display. No, when you see people go downhill and people go in a bad way, people becoming bad and causing a lot of damage and having no way to come back from that, that is the scariest type of storytelling there is out there and that is the most convicting that is going to inspire people to never make those mistakes in the first place. And that really just shows the power of storytelling. And so that is why we should never shy away from it. And I would encourage writers, fellow writers out there to explore the cautionary tale and consider how powerful it can be. But that is all I got for you guys today. What do you think about this video? Would you like to see more videos like this? I certainly would. I certainly like talking about these topics. Thank you so much. Thank you, patrons, for supporting the channel. And also, I've, I'm almost done with that short film I've been working on this entire time. Show a little preview of for it here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please stay tuned. And please, I hope that you will support that short film when it finally comes out. And I will see you guys next time.